How far could a team of snubbed players, players not picked by their countries for the World Cup, uh, how far could they go if they were in a team at the Rugby World Cup? I've gone through and picked a 23-man squad based on players who didn't make the cut. Uh, there's a kind of asterisk beside some of them. Uh, as far as I'm aware, most, if not all of these guys, were fit. Uh, there were a couple who I'll mention particularly about whether that was them that opted out. But either way, uh, I've picked a 23-man squad. Uh, and you guys can let me know how you think this one would have gone uh, at the World Cup. Would they have got out of their pool? Would they have made it a pool of death? Or would they have just gotten plain beaten? So, um, front row. I've got a Welshman, an Aussie, and a Kiwi. So I've gone with uh, Rob Evans from Wales at Loosehead. He was kind of a big omission, but uh, Reese Carey was, was the young guy coming in. And um, I believe Evans has had a bit of injury trouble, so... Uh, it saw the former first choice loosehead kind of not make the squad, which was disappointing. Uh, Tatafu Polata now at hooker, uh, veteran uh, Aussie player, still up to scratch. And the fact that he had been playing Super Rugby meant he would have been eligible for the squad. So um, yeah, it was a bit disappointing that he didn't get to to run out. But you can kind of see why Michael Checker opted not to take him. And tight head, I got to go Owen Franks. I mean, to be fair, he's not. He's just not as good as he used to be, um, but you got to think when he puts that black jersey on, he is still going to do a very, very capable job. So, him at a World Cup, I think, is the kind of the kind of player you need. So, yeah, put him in there. Second row, uh, I've got Devin Toner. That guy was very unlucky to miss out on on the selection for the Irish squad, and he is just a huge man. The Irish line out, which at times looked a bit shaky, like Best's and like Cronin's throwing, um, got criticised a fair bit, but it always looked better when, when Devin Toner was playing. So, yeah, just if there's, if there's one thing it's it's nice to have as a coach, I would imagine, it's uh, almost guaranteed line out success with with that, that option with, uh, with Toner in there. So I've put him in. And alongside him, I've put Richie Gray. Now, he's one of the guys who's kind of got an asterisk because I did read that uh, I think one of the Scottish assistant coaches said that he opted not to make himself available for the Scotland squad. Uh, I read mixed reports. Some said that he was omitted and others said he chose not to be chosen. So, because he'd apparently had his first child and he'd been coming back from injury as well. So... A bit of a cloud about that one, but still, former British and Irish Lion, you know, playing his, his rugby in France, he is a, a class operator. So, uh, if he's available, I definitely put him uh, into that team in the second row alongside Tona. I think that's pretty, a pretty good looking type five. Loose boards, uh, blindside. I got Liam Squire, and he's the other guy who's kind of got an asterisk beside him because. He made himself unavailable for the All Blacks prior to the World Cup, and then he missed out on the initial squad, and Steve Hansen never really explained what the deal was, but it seems like they had some kind of discussion about what what his selection criteria would be, and that he would be available if needed, but it seems like he wasn't needed. So from what I read, it sounds like the All Blacks opted not to pick him. Uh, but it may have been that he said, like, don't pick me unless, you know, you, you go go through a few guys and you really need me. So I'm not sure. But either way, if he's available, definitely picking that guy. Uh, you know, bruising blindside flanker. Uh, again, he's had his own injury troubles uh, and, um, and whatnot. But you just got to look at his stats. And he is uh, a top, top class operator at the number six jersey. Uh, on the open side, I've gone with Marcel Kutsia. Good thing with him is he can play pretty much anywhere in the back row. But at the breakdown time, he is uh, a classy operator. As I read these players out, I'm noticing there's a fair few guys that are pretty injury prone. Like Evans, Gray, Squire, and now Kutsia. All these guys have had their injury woes. So there may be reasons these guys weren't picked for a World Cup squad. Uh, but either way, I, I love watching Marcel Kutsia play. Uh, you know, for Ulster at the moment and back when he played for uh, for the Sharks in... in um, in super rugby so yeah he's just a, a great ball runner great at the breakdown and hard hitting tackler so what else could you want 
maybe a bit more in the way of not getting injured, but he can't control that. Anyway, uh, number eight, I go with Facundo Issa um, from Argentina. He was a pretty big omission. That guy is an absolute class player at number eight. Very, very dangerous uh, when he's got ball in hand off the back of that scrum. They opted to go with guys who were based in Argentina, which I think is why he missed out. But I really think he should have been there. I really, really think he should have been in that squad. Uh, that's not to, to disrespect any of the guys who did end up making that Argentina squad, but Facundo Issa is a, a class, class player. I think he should have been in an Argentina squad, but I'll put him in the snub team and he makes the thing look a bit better. So that's the forward pack. Backs. Uh, number nine, I have gone with Morgan Parra. He's a veteran. Uh, can kick goals. And uh, because I've, I've taken a little bit of inspiration from Rassi Erasmus and his World Cup winning team to only pick two backs. So I've only picked two backs. So Para is essentially my 10 cover as well. I don't think he's played 10 since probably 2011, but he can still do it in a pinch. So my 10 is going to have to go 80 minutes in all likelihood, but um, Para is there just in case um, my 10 goes down. And my 10 is Danny Cipriani. Uh, he's been in in stellar form in the premiership for quite some time and uh yeah just couldn't make the squad um i'll, I'll talk a little bit about the makeup of this squad in a bit um but yeah cipriani seems to have cleaned his act up off the field and just been playing good rugby those magic hands of his so if you want a guy to unlock a defense cipriani is potentially your man now if you're looking for a guy to break through a defense, I think putting Nani Lamapi in the number 12 jersey is definitely an option. That guy was very unlucky to miss out uh, on Rugby World Cup selection. Uh, it's interesting because I analyzed the stats from Super Rugby about all the guys who, who played in the midfield in New Zealand. And Lamapi is always the top guy in terms of those kind of individual stats like tackle busts, line breaks, uh, tries. You know, He is the guy who breaks the line. He is the danger man. Uh, but he had been working on those areas of his game, like distribution, kicking and whatnot. So uh, I think he's there, but the All Blacks selectors didn't think so. I'll put him there at 12. Uh, 13, I'll put Hugh Jones outside him. I remember Scotland fans kind of said that he hadn't been in great form prior to the World Cup. So there wasn't, it wasn't a huge surprise that he didn't get selected. But I think when he's on form, uh, you definitely pick Hugh Jones in your squad. So I'll give him a shot. Give, um, give him some ball from Cipriani. Uh, have him running off La Mapi and I think happy days. Happy, happy days. And he gets a bit of criticism for his, his defense, but his defensive numbers are, are generally okay. So uh, I'm not really building this team around defense, to be fair. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, left wing, speaking of not building a team around defense, Teddy Tomar. I'll put him on the left wing. That guy is an electric, electric runner. Um, you know, anytime he gets the ball, things good things happen. Uh, likewise, Tom Banks, who I'm putting at 15, he's a Wallaby. Uh, he is lightning quick, very, very fast, uh, very good for his, his Super Rugby team and, and for the Wallabies as well, but um, didn't make the World Cup squad, which was a pity. They ended up playing Kirtley Beal at fullback, but I think he might not have the distribution skills of, of, um, of Kirtley, but he's certainly got, again, kind of a bit of that individual brilliance and uh, expected to unlock a defense and Waisaki Naholo on the right wing. Um, again, he's kind of a good mixture of, of of pace and power. He's not just going to beat a man by going around him, which he can do with his gas, but he can uh, he can flatten guys as well. So that is the starting fifteen. I think it's probably a bit too like barbarian style for a World Cup. Like the fact that you got Cipriani, you got Teddy Toma, Tom Banks, even Lamapi to a degree. Like a lot of these guys are um, are flair players, maybe more than um, kind of grafters. But then you got Owen Franks, you got Devin Toner, you know, you got Liam Squire. These guys aren't kind of real flashy players. But for the bench, uh, I've picked Dylan Hartley at hooker. I'm pretty sure he was fit, but just didn't get selected. Um, Hooker is one that 
I don't know. I think uh, most of the, the top hookers did go to the World Cup. Um, I don't think Hartley would make England now anyway, uh, even if he'd been fit for a long stretch. Um, how long had he been fit before the World Cup? I'm not sure. Uh, Lizo Kaboka as my backup loose head. He kind of is a slightly, if he can get a flare prop, he kind of is a flare prop in that he's got some wheels for a prop, man. Um, I'm happy to have him there. Uh, Harry Williams for my reserve tight head. He was pretty unlucky to go. The exit of Ford pack is always good, and he is a key part of that. So I think they only took two tight heads, uh, did England, so he was unlucky. Uh, and I've got three reserves um, outside the front rowers who are also Fords. I've gone with Jason Jenkins as my reserve lock. Now, in a lot of countries, he probably walks into the starting team or at least into the, the squad. But with South Africa having, you know, Sneeman and Diaka and Elizabeth and Mostert, he couldn't even make the squad. So Jason Jenkins, I think he's played at least one game for the Springboks, but um, yeah, couldn't quite crack the squad. Very, very good player and can play in the loose as well. Uh, Jean-Luc Dupria, um, another one of the twins, loose forward, devastating ball runner, good offload very good man to have. And also Pete Samu uh, moved back from the Crusaders in New Zealand to play for uh, the Brumbies to try and get into the Wallabies and then doesn't make the World Cup squad. Checker had to work out a deal to even get him back to Australia. They did it, but then they're not, they're not, not ended. they didn't end up using him. Uh, versatile back row can play across the, um, the back row. Decent at the breakdown, decent at the line out, very kind of jack of all trades guy can um, slot him wherever needed, but very good tackle man. He was part of a champion Crusaders side for a reason. So Pete Summer was there, but that only leaves me with um, with two backs, which is easier to cover if you've got Francois Stein. Um, so I've gone with a Francois and Francois Hukat. He can cover scrum half, and on a, in a pinch he can play on the wing. So. There you go. That's a bit of versatility. And then, uh, I mean, I, I like him. I think he's probably past his prime at like 31, but um, he was one of my favorite uh, scrum halves, especially when he was like, uh, you know, applying that gas to his role. So he kept defenders honest and that you didn't know if he was going to kick, pass, or take a sneaky run. Uh, and I've gone with a one cap all black and Braden in all. He can cover essentially the whole back line apart from nine and 10. You can put him on the wing, you can put him in the midfield, you can even put him at fullback, and he will he will be fine. Um, so yeah, the only spot that leaves me with a, a bit of a shortage is 10, so Para is kind of the, the cover for that. But yeah, that's a snub team. All these talented players who, for one reason or another, didn't end up making the World Cup squad. Like I said, as far as I'm aware, all these guys were fit enough to make the squads uh, but were just not selected. Um, I didn't include some guys like Will Skelton was talked about, but he was just not eligible because he wasn't signed with a, um, with an Australian club. Uh, so I did have a look around, but yeah. And there's plenty of other guys who I've even snubbed myself who also could have made the squads. But hey, uh, there you go. That's the snub team. You guys let me know how you think that team would go. Uh, other guys you think deserved to go to the World Cup but didn't end up making it. Um... Yeah, fun one uh, that was. I was thinking about doing a kind of Exiles team as well, but it requires uh, looking at teams who only select from, um, you know, oops, there's the cot, which is um, next to my studio. Um, yeah, I was thinking about doing an Exiles 15, but you can only really choose from Australia, New Zealand, Wales, like countries which have got those um, selection criteria, but um, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to go look after the kids for a bit. You guys take it easy. As I said, let me know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later. Hey, guys, if you ever thought to yourself, that two cents rugby guy, he's all right. I wouldn't mind supporting him, but what can I do to support him? Uh, I've got a Patreon page. Uh, Patreon.com slash two cents rugby, or one word. 25 people are supporting me on Patreon. A buck a month. Sorry, they don't do two cents as an option, but um, yeah, put in a few different options. You can see some different stuff on there, such as Jacques Nineba potentially getting the Springboks job. That's one we talked about there. Um, also, Blues jersey review for 2020. 
that New Jersey, uh, which kind of applies to most of the Super Rugby teams for New Zealand anyway, because essentially they're all same the same model but with different color schemes on them. Uh, this one was a request actually on Patreon, but best websites for rugby stats and info. Talk about Six Nations, World Cup, Rugby Championship, Super Rugby, uh, and whatnot. So, um, yeah. Give it a thought, guys. Um, get enough people supporting on here, then I can um, maybe do a bit more time on rugby stuff. But, um, yeah, either way, guys, cheers for your support, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.